Hello everyone in Year of the Edit, um, this is Charlotte and I'm going to show you how to format your manuscript to industry standards and also how to set up word uh, styles so that you can do this with ease. I'm using um, Word in Microsoft Windows and I'm using version 2007 uh, but this technique works with any version after 2007 including 2010 and 2013. What I have here in front of me is a short piece of text from the start of a short story of mine and it's using the styles that sort of become um, standard and embedded in Word. That is I've got a, a title up here which has an underline and it's in blue and the rest of the text is actually in a font called Calibrian it's size 11 and it looks nothing like we want it to look. The first thing I want to talk about is how you set up a style and there's essentially two ways to do this. You need to see the styles bar when you're doing this and if you can't see it you'll see up here in the top right there's a little button on the styles ribbon. If you click that you'll see the list of styles on the side of the page. The important thing to realize is that everything in your Word document is assigned a style and normal, which is the one you can see highlighted at the moment, is the base style on which the other ones are usually based. So in this document, normal is Calibri size 11. And we actually want our document to be Times New Roman size 12. But the first thing I want to warn you against is setting your styles manually and I'll show you why that is. You can quite easily come into your document and highlight some text and go up here to the ribbon and say make that Times New Roman, make it size 12, make it double spaced. Mm -hmm. And you can even go into your paragraph styles and make the first line indented by a centimetre which is what we're going to want to do. And it starts to look right and many of you will currently be formatting your documents in this way. The problem is that all you've done is apply a style over the top of what's default in Word for normal. It's a little bit like having a room in your house painted one colour and just painting something over the top. The problem is though that that top coat doesn't stick and if you go and reapply the style um, it will disappear completely. Let me show you how that works. So currently this paragraph here is saying that's in normal style. But if I click on normal in the styles bar to reapply it, see how it goes back to exactly what we had before. We don't want that to happen. What we actually want is for the normal style to look like this paragraph so that everything automatically formats that way. And there's two ways to do this in Word. The first way, um, which can be a little bit harder, is to actually go into the style and format manually. Let me show you how that works. We come over here to the styles bar, we select the style we want to change, in this case normal, and we go to modify. In the modify window we can now change anything about that style. So we can change it to Times New Roman, we can set it to size 12 and we can make it double spaced. Go down to format in paragraph and we can change the first line to be indented by one centimetre. Now you see that all the paragraphs in the document that were normal type have all changed into that style and this time the style itself has changed and if you hover over it it will show you that the font, uh, the font is Times New Roman size 12 and that means when that style is reapplied it doesn't go back to, the, um, to a different base style like, as it did before. So that's one way to change the style. The second way is to actually manually change um, in the document, a little bit like the first thing I told you to do, um, and then apply that to an existing style. Let me show you what I mean. See my byline here? I want this to be centred and I would like it to be also Times New Roman size 12. Now at the moment it is Times size 12. If I make it centred and also because it's now basing off the normal style over here which is indented, we want to get rid of that so it is actually in the centre of the page. So I come into paragraph, set it to no indentation and now this looks pretty much how I want it to look um, for a subtitle. The thing is though, I want to apply that to the subtitle style. So you see over here in subtitle, if I click on the menu I can say update subtitle to match selection and I can go ahead and do that and now this is subtitle style. 
What you can see in the Power of Styles now is that I could actually switch any text in the document backwards and forwards between different styles that are predefined. So here in my first paragraph, at the moment it's normal style, but I could click on subtitle and have it centered exactly like this one is, and then easily go back to normal style with just the click of a button. See how that works. The last thing that I want to do is change the heading in the document. And this one, because it's got underline and blue and a few different things that I don't really want, it's going to be easier for me to make something in the document that looks right, apply the style, and then um, alter the one that's already there. So what I want, first thing I do is I make something in the document that looks like I want the title. So I'm going to have it centered, um, much like the subtitle style, and I'm going to have it no indentation. I wouldn't have to actually type the title for this to work, but I'll show you how it's done. So, And I want it bold. Now this looks exactly how I want the title of the, the document to look. And all I have to do is putting my cursor there, come across to this title attribute and say update that to match selection. And then it changes the title automatically to that. I then can actually delete the text that I just made in order to, to see what that looked like. And it automatically keeps the formatting on the title because I changed it in the style. Hopefully you see how that works. We can even do more advanced things such as with the title, we can actually modify that and put a large amount of space um, before that. So say maybe 150 points spacing beforehand. And now that appears part way down the page. One of the other things that you'll want to do in your document is to um, create other styles um, such as chapter numbers. And the easiest way to do that is to just choose um, a style to do so. So for example, if I wanted a chapter one here, I could write chapter one. I might like that to be in bold. And I'd like it not to be indented. And so now I have that looking like it is. Remember though, that if you do it this way, you must actually apply it to a style. Do you see the problem that we've got at the moment? I've got this part of um, my heading looking exactly how I want it to look, but it's still currently listed as a normal style paragraph. What happens if I reapply that style to the line now is that it changes back and we don't want it to do that. So what we have to do is apply this to its own style and I'm going to use heading one. So if I might make heading one, update it to look like that. Now, anytime that I want to make a new chapter, so say I had come down to the end of my document, I would make a hard return, say I wanted heading one and chapter two would automatically look exactly as I wanted it to. So that's how you set the styles. Usually in a document, you need um, only a couple of, of styles set. The title, subtitle or byline, the chapter number, um, and your normal style. Further ones that you might like to do if you like are a first paragraph style if, say, you don't want to indent the first paragraph of, your, um, of your, uh, each paragraph. The way to do that is, say, we want to apply it to this style. So you come down here and you'll see at the bottom, I'll just make sure that you can see this. So at the bottom of your styles um, bar, you'll see a little button there that says new style. So that can actually create a whole new style. Um, say you'd like to make one with a new name. So you open that up and I'm going to call this one new scene for the first paragraph. And what I want to change is that in that, there's no indentation of the first line, okay? And I can even say that after I have a paragraph of this one, see style for the following paragraph, I can make that normal. And that means that after I type one of these paragraphs, it will automatically come down. The last thing that I've noticed here in this document is do you see how there's actually too much space between these paragraphs? And that's happening because in the normal style, um, we've got extra space included in the style. The way to fix that is to come into normal and modify it. Have a look in paragraph attributes and make sure that this after number is zero.
Now when we go back to the document, we can see that we've got even spacing between the paragraphs and our document is starting to look far more like a professional document. The last thing that I want to do here is to fix the heading um, so that we've got a name um, and a page number at least on every page of our document. To edit the header we can either double click in the header area or if that doesn't work for you, you can go into the insert menu, find header and then choose from the bottom of the list which is going to be off my screen, edit header and that will take you into the same place. What we want to do here is actually have, um, a, we might actually want to set up a new style. I'm actually going to change my display options at the moment, just showing you, you can get it to show you just the styles that are in use or in the current document. So I'm going to set it to that. So I just see the ones that I'm using. And I'm going to set a new style here called manuscript header. Uh, which allows me to adjust how this appears. I'm going to format the paragraph to make sure there's no indentation because I don't want indentation in the heading. And otherwise I'm going to keep it pretty much the same. Now in my header, the way that I want this to appear is I want to put the um, on the far right hand and we can actually view our rulers if we want to see our tabs at the top. I'm going to tab across to the end. Usually your header will default to these tab positions. And I'm going to put my name, a space slash, the name of the manuscript, another space slash, and then I'm going to go into design and insert a page number in the current position as just a plain number. And that will mean that this number is a field that will copy through to each page. So now you'll see if I scroll down that it's two on the next page. Don't ever insert your page numbers into the text of the main page. Always put them in a header unless you um, direct it otherwise. And don't ever include them in a text box um, that's over the top of the page because text boxes can easily move around or get lost or get corrupted. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to do um, for the formatting of your document. Once those styles are set up, um, every time that you want to start a new paragraph, you just need to go to the appropriate style for the part you're working on. One last style that you may wish to set up um, is a, a scene spacing style, which I often um, set up. And a scene spacing style is just um, something that is centered um, so that you can put a hash there. An alternative, um, so I'll show you how that works. So I've set up scene spacing here. I've checked that I've got no indentation because I want it in the middle of the page. And now I'm in this point. So here I would, I would put in a scene spacing and then I would go back to normal text or new scene and I would start typing and the next paragraph in the next scene. Okay. Another way to do this, if you're feeling very technical, is actually to create these um, scene spaces as a heading style. And all you have to do is set one up like this and then click your cursor in it and then go to your heading two style and say update that to match selection. Then what you do is any time that you're putting in a scene spacer, you use that heading two style to put it in. Why do I do this? I do it so that when I look at my, um, my document map, I can easily negotiate between chapters and scenes. Let me show you how that works. If you go to view, in um, your options, you'll see a checkbox there for document map. When you bring up document map, see how now on the side we have our headings because we assign them to heading styles. So heading chapter one, the first slash and the second slash chapter two. Do you see now here that if I've got a very large document, I can have chapter one and then this I know is the second scene, the third scene. It avoids me having to search through looking for the scenes that I want. And I'll show you an example of that in a current document if I open. So if I open the current manuscript that I'm working on, which looks like this, and now you can see how huge this document is, 30 chapters. Okay, but all the slashes are there so I can easily navigate my way around. If I click on chapter one, I go to chapter one. Scene, second scene, third scene, fourth scene. Chapter eight, chapter eight, third scene. See how this works? 
it's something that's very powerful. So if you can take a little bit of time to learn how to use those heading styles so that you can negotiate through a document map, that can be really powerful. If that's a little bit too much to take in, then just go through setting up styles so that you make sure that when you've got a heading assigned or any text assigned to a certain style and you re-click on that style, it doesn't change to something else. That's all I wanted to get across. I hope that this hasn't been too fast. Watch it through a few times and try it for yourself on your word processor um, if you're having trouble following. And if you're using a different program, um, like Pages on a Mac or something else, look and see whether you've got something similar in terms of functionality to styles. It'll just be a matter of working out how your program works. Thanks for watching.